Recently, I read a book called You Can't Lie to Me, and it was fascinating. It was by Janine Driver, and I've got her right over there. She is a body language expert who has trained people at the CIA, the FBI, and Scotland Yard. I wanted to bring her in because what she does is extraordinary. It's not going to be admitted into evidence, but it's something I want to know more about. It's fascinating to me, and I think you'll like it, too. Carlene thought she was living the dream when she married her middle school crush, Tracy. But after a year and a half of marriage, her dream turned into a nightmare. And now she's wondering why she ever said, I do. I knew he had children. And I'm going out the door to my car. This woman is banging on my car, hollering, saying that he owes her money. He kicked us out for you, and I'm like, yo. Two weeks after we were married, a phone And I see a gentleman's name on there. That struck her nerve because this is a gentleman that she met two weeks prior. We were chit chatting with some other dude. Was this hasty union doomed from the start, or can Carlene and Tracy live happily ever after? You think that he married you because you had a $30,000 inheritance. Isn't that true? Today on Divorce Court. Come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Carlene Lene Rivers Gilbert and Mr. Tracy Gilbert. You've been married for four and a half years, although you separated three years ago. Uh, you do now want to get a divorce, and we will talk about that. And you also have several financial issues you'd like me to resolve. But before we get to that, Ms. Rivers Gilbert, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and how the two of you met? Um, I've known Tracy ever since we were kids, teenagers in middle school. And my family, we moved to Florida, and I actually reunited with him 10 years later at the airport. He was coming to Florida to visit someone, and I was leaving Florida to go to Richmond. And you just happened to run into and each other. And happened to run into him at the airport. I thought And you thought that it. was it. Kismet, I it thought was, it was yeah. it. Yeah. I'm supposed <laughs> to be with you. Yes, because <laughs> I, I did have a crush on him back in, back in the, the day. Back in the day. So I was like, you know what, this is it, yes. Mr. Gilbert, did you think this was it too in the airport? At the time? Yeah, did sparks fly for you? Um, old flames started to arise, but it didn't. It wasn't, it, 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 it wasn't a full-fledged full combustion, not, just a not, little smoke. Not right then and there, no. Okay, now the reason I ask is you got married 30 days later. So not exactly. Um, okay. Correct me where I'm some, wrong. Some time had, had surpassed. I went back to, to Virginia right. after my visit. Uh, she came back to Florida, and we started communicating over the phone. Okay. So we conversated over the phone for about close to a year. And then she, that's when she moved to Virginia. And when she moved back at the end of 2007, she resided with me and my uh -huh. son. And we were living together for about two, three months. Mm -hmm. And then... We were just having a conversation, and I said, hey, you know, why we, we couldn't get, get married? We were having a conversation, yeah. and we just decided, hey, why don't we get married? Right. Is that how it happened? I was telling him that I was deciding to move back to Richmond, mm -hmm. and he constantly in my ear, yeah, come on, come on, you can come stay with me, live with me. I, my son is here. You know, in my head, I'm like, you know what, I love this dude. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. You know, and I, I had to find a job, so now I had he proposed before you went, or you went on a humble? I went on a humble. Oh, yeah. ladies, please, <laughs> you know, don't make that move, because you've invested so much by the time you've gotten there that you can end up putting up with a lot more than you would otherwise have to if you had <laughs> options that remained while you were still elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Make him come get you and take you and mm -hmm. bring you and then the other stuff. But anyway, you say that there was a lot of other baby mama drama. Yes. When I first moved to Richmond, everything was good the first two days. Third day. For all 48 hours. <laughs> first two days was, was fine. Good. That's right. It That's was right. good. Third day, <laughs> that's when all the drama started happening. What happened? We was going out to Blockbuster, going to get a boo-boo. And this woman is knocking at the door with some kids. I knew he had children. And 
I'm going out the door to my car. This woman is banging on my car, hollering, saying that he owes her money. He kicked us out for you, and I'm like, yo, what? And I'm looking at him, and he's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. I got this. I got this. Don't worry about it. So I'm being the one, you know, I'm going to step back, let him handle the drama. The business, uh -huh. And I'm just going to step back. But this woman was banging on my car, asking for money. Did that happen, Mr. Gilbert? Yes. Now, 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 hey, what can you say, right? It, you, it, it, you can't be tagged for her behavior. Were you living with this woman no. right before Ms. Rivers came down to be with you? The situation was this. Um, the mother of my children, of my three of my children, she was evicted. Uh -huh. She had nowhere else to go. I opened my door for my children. Right. She came alone. Right. Okay. A woman is not separating herself from her children. Absolutely okay. not. I'd rather have my children with me under my roof instead right. of on the street. Right. I have another son by somebody else. Mm -hmm. I have full custody of him. I've had him since he was five. Gotcha. Um, they were not getting along. There was always conflict and, and friction. So I was forced to remove her from my home. Got it. Okay. M Mr. Gilbert, can I say this? And yes, this is just not to you, but to, to, to guys in general. When you do things like impregnate and leave, there are so many waves and wakes and problems you create in, right. your, in your wake. This mother, that mother, the other mother, that kid, the other kid, not just economics, but time and anger and jealousy and issues, all <laughs> that, you know what I mean? You can't just have sex and, and ha make babies and keep moving right. because it, it just tears up the You're fabric right. of society. When divorce door continues, has Carlene been unfaithful? Things happen in the marriage in which she had me thinking that she was cheating. Uh -huh. Why do you think she was cheating? Are you dealing with baby mama or baby daddy drama that is ruining your current long-term relationship? If so, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorce court divorce court is back with the case of carlene rivers gilbert who says she is tired of tracy's ex interfering in her marriage but did tracy ever really love carlene in the first place <laughs> Ms. rivers gilbert let's just get to the get you think that he married you because you had a thirty thousand dollar inheritance isn't that true yes why, really? why do you think that <laughs> happened? Why do you believe that? Because Be before I got to Richmond, we was on the phone. I told him about some things in the family, about, you know, my, my grandparents love some money, mm -hmm. and grandkids get a certain amount when they're a certain age. Right. I get to Virginia, and after I'm here, wasn't even dating 30 days. Got married April 30th. What made her so different than the other mothers of the other children that you had that you said that within that short period of time, she's the one I want to spend the rest of my life with? Those conversations over the phone? Uh-huh. That's when I, she convinced me that she was the one. He convinced you? I was convinced. Everything that I told her, she was okay with it. From my religion, from me having children, she was okay. And I didn't know about the $30,000 until... That's an interesting after. thing you just said to me. Everything I wanted, she was okay with, so she was the one. I was convinced. Isn't that bizarre? Don't you think that's weird? Th this is me having five children and me having the, the burden of trying to bring five children along with mm -hmm. another a new relationship. Because right. I wasn't with their mother anymore. Right. I, I, have to, I have to live on. Right. But I can only do that with the woman who's willing to accept me having five kids. Right. Okay. She was willing to accept that. So we got that out the way. What's, what's the second part? Okay. And things happened in the marriage in which she had me thinking that she was cheating. Uh-huh. Why do you think she was cheating? Two weeks after we were married, I go with her to her grandmother's house. Yeah. I was supposed to go to the gym, what have you, change my mind at the last second. Get to her grandmother's house, within 10 minutes of sitting down in the living room, her phone rings. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother's phone rings. I take it upon myself, I hit the button, the call ID button, and I see a gentleman's name on there that struck a nerve because this is a gentleman that she met two weeks prior. I, so I, she I did not meet that person. When, like when you chit-chatting with some other dude? I 
was chit chatting with a friend, this person who called I known for when we was in middle school. And I told him my cell phone is messed up. And he already had my grandmother's number from way back. I said, you can reach me there. If I'm there, if I'm not, leave a message. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. But okay. he knew, the guy knew that I was married to him. Okay. Only reason he was calling is because I asked his mother about a job. I got you. That's it. I got you. I understand. Another, I, 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 no, I understand ab about that. Because I, I think it's a little suspect myself. Yes. I do understand about that, <laughs> Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert, you yes. say that he mistreats your son. Mistreating him in the sense of not opening up to being warm. What I was looking for her to do, just for days when he would come in from school, hey, how was your day? Mm -hmm. I did say that to him. It was, she was more so of, hey, pick this up, hey, clean your room. Not, hey, not how are hey, you, how you doing, what's, what's going on, how's I your love day you, going? just that kind of thing. You know. And I was that towards his son. His son was a little disrespectful to me. But I told him about that. I told him and about I spoke his son, to my son being about it. disrespectful mm -hmm. to so me. Well, you know, there's always it's always messy. Right. When, when when you you know, it's not all of a sudden, ooh, happy happy land when you have have stepchildren. I right. mean, I did that, and right. it, you know, I you know. And I understand that. It's part. a hard thing to do. Yes, it is. When divorce court continues, Judge Lynn won't stop until she finds out the truth about Carlene's inheritance. I don't know if the thirty thousand has ever existed. She thinks you married her for the money, and I don't know what happened. <laughs> We're gonna have somebody who reads body language in here. So, Joe, could you bring in this driver? Do you think Tracy married Carlene for her inheritance? Call 1-800-282-1991 and vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. Gilbert, who denies his wife's allegations that he married her only for her inheritance money. But will body language expert Janine Driver be able to prove that he is lying? I spy bad people who do bad things, Judge. I look for behavioral patterns that indicate when someone's holding something back. Did you ever get any of that 30 grand? I never what saw I anything. I know. That's another thing. We, <laughs> I didn't marry her for no $30,000, okay? Her money is her money. But oh, if you hmm. tell me that you are inheriting this money and we're struggling, you go ahead. Why are we still struggling if you're supposed to have, you're already 30. Now it comes into, oh, well, these lawyers got to talk to my uncle, my uncle got to talk to the lawyers. Did you ever get the $30,000? I did. What did you do with it? Well, actually, between me and my grandma, it went into a savings CD account. Have you seen the account? I've seen it once. I don't know if the 30000 has ever existed. She thinks you married her for the money. Now, I'm not so sure whether or not she floated out the money to snag you. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so we're going to have somebody who reads body language in here to help me out. So, Joe, could you bring in this driver? She has worked for uh, the FBI, the CIA, and uh, Scotland Yard, which is very cold. <laughs> this is Mrs. Driver. How are you? Good. How are you, Joe? Good. She wrote this great book. I read it. That's why I brought her here. You can't lie to me. You can't lie to me. You Joe. can't lie to me. So you've been watching the Gilberts in the back there. So why don't you tell me what you see from these well, two? Well, Judge, what do you see first with these lips right here? What happened to them? He, he, oh, Stress. I can speak. They just disappear. Yeah. When we don't like what we see or hear, our lips disappear. My lips were dry. That's it. I'm just licking my lips. Yeah. Let me just tell you a little bit about my background. I, I spot... <laughs> I spot <laughs> bad people who do bad things, mm -hmm. Judge. I look for behavioral patterns that indicate when someone's holding something back. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the signs that someone's holding mm -hmm. something back. So but, but let's start with Mr. Rivers Gilbert, though, first. Hello. Hi. You remember meeting me in the trailer? Yes. Thinking I was a producer? Yes. Great. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. <laughs> here's the deal. Ms. Gilbert, right, Ms. Uh, Ms. Rivers Gilbert, what she does is your baseline, I'm always looking for a baseline. Mm -hmm. Your baseline, when you're telling me the truth, is going upper left. You use both hands to gesture, you're very animated, your eyes go upper left. When I ask you about the $30,000, uh, did you think that maybe, you know, Mr. Gilbert married you for that money? Again, you looked upper left, consistent with her baseline, so mm -hmm. I do believe you believe that. 
to be true. I believe there is $30,000. What you didn't find out is the reason why they got into financial duress is that you were in jail for four months for not paying child support. You were paying the bills for the apartment, everything. And so, of course, when the 30 grand comes in, is she going to take 15 grand and pay off the bills for no. his kids? Maybe not. When the voice court continues, will body language expert Janine Driver catch Tracy in a lie? I asked about the $30,000. He switched his sandwich from one hand to the other and began talking with his left hand. It's a change in his baseline. It's what we call a deceptive hot spot. Mm -hmm. So he said to me, there is more to the story there. Do you think Tracy married Carlene for her inheritance? versus Tracy Gilbert, who have known each other since middle school and are in court ending their year and a half marriage. All right, now let's talk with uh, Mr. Gilbert here. Absolutely. This is very interesting. <laughs> are you a right-handed? Are you right-handed? Yes, ma'am, I am. Right-handed people, when they say positive things, Judge, they'll mm -hmm. tend to talk more with their right hand when they're saying things that are believable and they're positive. Left hand with the negativity. Mm -hmm. And flip it, if you're a lefty, you'll do this with the mm -hmm. positive, right? So right here with Mr. Gilbert, the whole time that you're talking to me, sir, you're talking with your right hand, talking with your right hand, talking with your right hand, till the end of our 30-minute conversation where I asked about the $30,000. He switched his sandwich from one hand to the other and began talking with his left hand. It's a change in his baseline. It's mm -hmm. what we call a deceptive hot spot. Mm -hmm. So it said to me, there is more to the story there. When I compared the two cases, he, she said, he said, there were conversations, I believe there were conversations where he did know the money existed before he got married, where I believe that you lied to me. No, I did not. You did not lie to me? No, I did not. So you didn't know that there was $30,000? I did not know before we got married. Yeah. No, I did not. You're lying now? No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see he did a tongue protrusion? I don't know if you can see. No, he did I didn't a tongue protrusion. No. So he did this. As adults, when we don't like the taste of something in our mouth, guess what happens, Judge? A tongue protrusion comes out. Mm. Right here. So I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. Okay. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it. Good. <laughs> I love her. I think she's fascinating. But I don't, I'm not going to take any of that into consideration. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's, she's fascinating. You know, it, well, no, just, 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 just it, yeah, think about it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, why don't you tell me, Ms. Uh, Rivers Gilbert, why you want me to award you $2,800? $2,800 is for the last, part of it's for the last two months of the rent off the lease. Last two months that of rent. That was in the apartment. I feel that since I paid all the utilities and the rent for the other part of the year, he could at least pay the last two that were in this apartment. Yonder, she lived with me for a whole year when she right. first moved here. Yes. So I didn't charge her for anything. And then she didn't tell me that she was moving or she, she was separating from me and my son uh, until a month prior. She abandoned me and my son, y'all. I did not abandon you and your son. I gave you six months in advance that we are Yana, moving out this apartment I her for you to handle your business. Hang on, hang on. Did you just get up and leave? No, because we both moved out at the same time. The lease was up in September, <laughs> and I just left her and, and, my, and our children. Mm -hmm. I always looked at her as a bad guy. Well, you've left a lot of women with children <laughs> elsewhere all around. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep, sure did. I mean, it, it, it's what you do. And, and now you're going to accuse her of abandoning you and a child that you had with some other woman altogether. How much sense does that make? That's, the, that's what you do. You well, disseminate and go. That's you not leave true, women with children and you don't live there anymore. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. you did. And when you said that's not true, you pulled your lips in. I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> Listen. You two got married for all the wrong reasons at the wrong time. I think you were looking for money. I think you were looking looking for the ooh wee. It's just a kismet. That doesn't happen. There's no fairy tales. There's no knight in shining armor. This is if there we're people and you never tell people about money and you gotta know where your money is. You can't say you I don't even know about it. I don't know what you two were doing. You're not getting any money. You're not getting any money. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. Tracy said that he and Carleen talked it out and they decided to stay married. They went out to dinner a couple of times and want to try to work out their differences for the new.